My name is Tiffany Schmidt. I work here at the Association of Central uh, with the ACNET program, which is the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program. It's a tongue twister. So, um, but I work with families with limited resources throughout Rutherford County, uh, teach them about nutrition, meal planning, shopping on a budget, food safety, uh, working with Title I schools, health department. Lots of fun, we get to meet a lot of people, and, uh, and uh, just, you know, Denise is my helper today, she's a volunteer, she'll be going in and out and serving you the samples as we go along. Um, but today I've got quite a few little recipes here for you. It is Crock-Pot Creations, is the class, uh, but also I made a little recipe with zucchini to show you you know, so you can try that as well. Then you go along with one of these recipes. But you should have a recipe book. And then this right here is some extra information I got off the snap and government site. And all of the vegetables that we have today, I kind of printed off the nutrition platform. So that it shows you what kind of nutrition you get from each of these vegetables. And then this sheet right here, because we're using so many colors today, uh, this is a sheet on what each color is good for, to, to be healthy. So basically they encourage the rainbow, lots of color. How many of you try to eat lots of different vegetables and fruits? You're not. Okay. Well, because this is a crop pot class, how many of you use a crop pot brain Almost everyone. Okay. <clears throat> well, with the recipes I have today, too, I just want to kind of explain. This is my little, new little toy uh, I purchased last week. But it is a pressure cooker. But it also sautés your vegetables if you wanted to do that before you actually use the crock pot. And as a, <clears throat> as a pressure cooker, this is the lid I use. I just learned this last week, so I love it. Um, you can can... Uh, Panning in it, you can do anything. Beef tips, we did, I did beef tips in 25 minutes. You can can in it? Uh-huh. Yeah. What brand is it? Cooks and Essentials. And I got it off QVC just because it, I had the TV on and it was on sale. <laughs> um, but, and I was also getting ready to do this class, but it changes into a crock pot as well. So, more for your money. But I love it. And then this, of course, is my regular crock pot, which I love because it has a handle on the side. So if I'm transporting it, it doesn't end up all over my floor. But I do love both of these. There isn't any particular brand. I just, you know, you want to make sure you get one that's good and it seals good. Uh, some, in some cases, the cheaper you get might be, you know, you want to make sure you get a good product. Um, but the first recipe we're going to start out with, these are the zucchini sticks, and I think it is, might be the last one. I could have worked in order, huh? Mm -hmm. Second page, or third. And I don't fry a lot of things because it's extra fat. <clears throat> so these are, uh, I made them in the oven for about 20 minutes. First, what I did was... I cut the zucchini, and you use about four medium. Make sure you wash them really well. I don't peel them. I like to peel them. But I cut them about that size right there. Okay? And then once I have those cut, I combine two eggs and two tablespoons of milk, and I whisk that up. Set that aside. I put the flour, the garlic powder, the salt and pepper in here. And then I put the zucchini sticks in there. <clears throat> My, I have allergies, so excuse me. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I take my tongs, pull one out at a time, put it in the egg mixture, and then I have panko flakes. How many of you use that? Okay. I love it. Um, it keeps it nice and crunchy, not soggy. Uh, <clears throat> she came in and she said, usually they go soggy after you heat them up. She was really surprised how crunchy they are. So we, we mix that, and I use Asiago cheese. How many of you have heard of that? Okay. It's usually in the deli. It's a little bit more money, but it's very good, very flavorful. 
It is there for Prabhama. And as you can see, the finished product, if you'll hold those up for me. Very nice, very pretty, <clears throat> and they stay crunchy. Um, but what I do is after I put them in that flour mixture and run the egg, I recommend putting uh, the pink flakes and the grated cheese, finely grated, on um, the paper. And then when you take the zucchini out, you put it on that sheet, you set it on here, and then you kind of toss it like this. And that way you don't lose a lot of that flour or the panko flakes. It sticks to it better. And then when you're done, of course, you just lay them out on the cookie sheet. And I use parchment paper. I learned something new on that too. But I went shopping with my daughter. She just moved out. And I learned, and I had never been taught this, that your cookie sheets, your dark cookie sheets, you have dark and you have light. So the darker your cookie sheet is, the darker your cookie comment. You all know that? So I think that's why they have to that parchment paper on there, because that way it doesn't turn out really dark and it's a light color. You just put them on there, you bake them about 10 minutes, put them 10 minutes more, and you're done. Very quick and easy to help you snack for the kids or for yourself. And then you can serve it with a little bit of ranch dip or uh, marinara sauce. The next recipe is on the next page, and it is. Uh, your the acorn squash with maple cranberry filling. Now this was actually in my pressure cooker recipe. Okay, so this is where you learn by cooking. So I buy everything, and always I recommend always read the instructions and directions before you start the recipe. <laughs> I did not this time, thinking I was gung ho I wanted to try it when you told me, you know. Uh, I bought everything for it and then found out I had to buy a separate steaming tray to go on the bottom for this recipe. Well, I didn't have one. So, I just um, looked up how to make this with the crock pot and it was very easy. Added some apple juice and just kind of changed it up. But that was my lesson. Always read your entire recipe before you go shopping. And Make sure you have everything. But with this recipe, very simple, very easy. I'm using two acorn squash. How many of you have actually made something with this? Okay, not many. I had neither, and that's why I wanted to use this today. Uh, you basically use two of those. You cut it in half, and then you cut it in quarters. And you just take a spoon and scoop out the seeds and all that stuff in the middle. Okay. And then you're going to lay that in the bottom of your crock pot. You're going to lay that in the bottom. You're going to have your Granny Smith apples. They're the green ones. I haven't tried any other ones, but these are the these are really good with that. Uh, make sure you wash them thoroughly. You're going to peel them and cut the core off. And then dice them up. Tell them about this consistency right here. And then you're going to mix that with dried cranberries. I got this big old bag at Sam's. I purchased it for, I think, about seven or eight dollars. It'll go a long way. Um, but I mix that with the apples. And then in a separate bowl, I mix the brown sugar, cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg. Thank you. And I mix that together and then I toss it in a bake bowl. And then I layer that over the top of the acorn. And then I put apple juice in the bottom. And the only difference between this recipe and the one in the fresh <laughs> cooker is that I don't use the apple juice. So you can do it either way. But look how pretty that is. Lots of color. Okay? And once I layer that and I put the apple juice in the bottom, or bottom, I just drizzle a little bit of maple syrup over the top. Now maple syrup, 100% pure, is a little expensive, but it'll go a long way. Uh, and you know what you're, you know, you know what you're consuming, maple syrup. But this was about six dollars. Just for this one. <laughs> 
and then once I drizzle that on there, I take just a little slice of unsalted butter. I don't want salted, and I just lay that on top. And then I lay it all in there. I cook it for about four hours, and it's done. So very quick and easy again, mainly measuring and, and chopping. And she's going to press that out in just a minute after she gets those pests out. How are those zucchini sticks? Very good. How long did you say the crop cut? Four hours. On low, uh -huh. high? Um, mine's on high. Uh -huh. Four to five hours, I would say, depending on the size of your acorn squash. Okay. Can you say again what you did differently because it was not the same? Yeah. Um, basically the same recipe, um, but with the pressure cooker, I think, in your directions, it only, it only takes about, I mean, literally minutes. <laughs> Six minutes. Six minutes. Yeah. So literally six minutes to make that in the pressure cooker versus four to five hours in the crock pot. But did you say you left something out? I thought I No, I, I did it exactly how it was, but with the crock <coughs> pot I put about a half an inch to an inch of apple juice so that because if you don't it'll dry out. So the apple juice kind of comes up and steams it and gives us that flavor. Versus if it was in here it would steam it. Any more questions? <coughs> right. and, and the reason why I picked the squash too is because I don't know. I you know I haven't made it very much in the past, and you know I wanted to learn some new recipes on that, so I thought that would be beneficial for you as well. And it's very nutritious, this whole recipe. And also, this is a fall squash, and then your butter that is your summer squash. Trust me, this is one of my favorites. I love okra. How many of you like okra? How do you prepare it? Uh, you try. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you fry it? Okay. How many of you have cooked it any other way besides frying it or the point? Okay, yeah. Okay, which is kind of what this is. It's not it's more of a it could be a side dish. Soup, it's not as runny as soup would be. Uh, but I love okra. I'm originally from Utah, so you'll be amazed from the West Coast to the East Coast how the food is so different. I had never heard of okra before I was here. So it's unreal. My dad is trying to find it over in Washington State. He can't find it anywhere. I mean, he can find it frozen, you know, things like that. He has to get a fresh like we do. So, and I don't fry it pretty much to anything. So that's why I love to find new recipes with the okra. This recipe uses a lot of different vegetables. And again, lots of color. Uh, I used <coughs> the okra. I think it was about a cup, two cups. <coughs> one cup. And with the okra, I just sliced in very thin slices. Very thin slices about that. You can see that. And um, and then I had two cups of chopped zucchini again. And they, these are all in season right now over at the farmers market. And then corn, corn's a little harder to get right now. But if you can get fresh <coughs> corn, that's the best with this recipe. Uh, next choice would be your frozen, and then of course the canned. But I recommend the fresh. And the easiest way that I do that is just take my knife and go down with it like so. We want to get as much meat of, meat of the ear of the corn as possible. Okay. But I use two of these. And I use about four zucchini. And the okra goes a long way. But you want to make sure you wash everything. You don't want to peel anything. You don't want the peeling in there. And basically on this one, you're just going to mix everything. I use, it says diced tomatoes. I like the ones with a little seasoning. So I use uh, the basil, garlic, and oregano. And again, no salt added. I want to reduce that as much as possible. And then I bought a can of vegetable broth. And you're just going to use about a half of that. And I just stuffed it in there. It was on sale. And then I use three cloves of garlic. I love these. How many of them? Mince them. 
strong and pressed. Um, and I'm not promoting anybody specifically, but I got this from Pampered Chef, I swear it's probably about 12 years ago. And I love it. It takes the peeling and everything off for you. You don't have to peel it. So, uh, with this recipe, you just want to blend everything literally in the crock pot. <clears throat> and then I use uh, the onion. I used yellow onion a third cup. I couldn't find the white one at that time, so yellow is fine. With this recipe, you can also add bell peppers, any kind of peppers, jalapenos. Um, you can even add eggplant, which is also in season. I like to find new recipes with eggplant as much as But you can put that in there as well. After this simmers for about, I think it was about four or five hours. <coughs> yeah, four hours. I shouldn't have done that. I made it three times in the last three days. Mm -hmm. But it's four hours. And then if you look at this, <coughs> lots of color. And that's what you want to go for. But that's something easy that you can just set up, you know, set up before you go to work or wherever you're going throughout the day, and that way you're not in a rush and you get home to cook. And also, a, a good trick with the okra, if you want to freeze it when it's in season, buy it a little bit less expensive. You can take and cut the tops off, lay it on some wax paper on a cookie sheet in the freezer, freeze it. And then once it's free, it's frozen about 30 minutes to an hour. Take it out and put it in uh, freezer bags. And then you have your open. Very easy. Very easy. And if you have questions about how to freeze things or, you know, preserve them or keep them, when you're going through the farmer's market, the vendors will help you. Because it was one of the vendors that told me how to do that. Because I kept, you know, waiting. Um, or it would go in my fridge and it would go back. So he told me how to get it, it's so easy. Um, but once this is done cooking for about four hours, you're gonna mix your hot sauce and, no. <coughs> you're gonna mix the hot sauce with just, just this right here. And then uh, I use the <coughs> lemon and I squeeze that in there. And then I use fresh parsley. I like fresh herbs. So you can use dried or fresh, but usually double it if it's fresh. And then you want to just layer that in there, stir it up, and you're done. And that just adds <coughs> a lot of flavor. And a lot of these I couldn't make prior, of course, because it's crock pot. So I just want to kind of go through and explain it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is that true of all herbs if you use them fresh? Pretty much double up on me. Mm -hmm. Any recipe I've had, it is. Yeah. Okay. No, you know, a different recipe might change, but anytime I've read it, usually it's double it up. And honestly, if I get a little extra fresh herbs in there, it just makes it that much more flavorful. <laughs> I love just going back out the backyard and picking it off the plant. And they all, at the store, they also have those tubes. How many of you have seen those tubes in the urban section? Um, that have dill or parsley or whatever in there. Then they last quite a while. Alright, what did she tell us about? Well, how was that? Now that would be a great fall recipe, you know, for dinner. Yeah. It does. It does. When you you have a little bit of brown sugar, not much, and you have that maple syrup. Okay. And I really do. If you can't get the 100% pure maple syrup, it does go a long way in this case. It doesn't have the high fructose corn syrup in it. Or it's what is that? Um, right there. Yeah. And the squash, I don't usually eat the peel on that. I forgot to mention that. And even though I don't eat the peel on these, again, I can't stress enough, wash, 
wash your fruits and vegetables, even if you're not eating the outside. Uh, even if it's watermelon or cantaloupe or anything like that, wash the outside. Um, because what happens is, if you go to the produce section or anywhere really, and watch how many times a piece of fruit or melon is cut. A lot. Because people have different ways to figure out if it's fresh or not, right? Hunting on it, you know, whatever it might be. So, but if you don't wash it, when, when you go to cut into it, everything that was on the outside of that peel is now on the inside. So think about it that way. So I teach food safety, so that's a big point I want to make. And then also, uh, since I work with kids, if you have kids, grandchildren, whoever it might be, um, if they're helping you cut all this good stuff up, um, usually when they're healthy, they're more prone to eat it, number one. And number two, um, I have these little sheets that go under the cutting boards. If you can all see this. And this is sold at the dollar store, you know, in rolls. It's that drawer liner stuff. But if you cut an oval shape or a square shape, put that under your cutting board, your cutting board does not move. So, you know, you won't cut yourself, nor your children. And then another good tip, if you're wanting to get them more involved in the kitchen, you have these children knives. You can find, you know, you can Google it. Um, Kids Shelf, I think, has them in other places. But they don't cut their fingers. And they cut through the vegetables and fruit. So these are excellent. In your, in your recipe book on that last page, I wanted to make sure you had other options. So instead of using that can of soup, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, whatever it might be, I put a page on how to make your own white sauce. So you can use that in, in substitute of that can of soup. Less sodium. You know what you're putting in there. Okay. And I do recommend if you're going to use butter, to use butter. Real unsalted. Real butter. Real butter. This is how I buy it. I don't use a lot of it, but if I'm going to use butter, I use the 100% butter. Because I know what it is. If you look on the margarine and everything, you know, it has a lot of different items in there that I'm not quite sure what they are. So if I don't know what, I, if I don't know what it is, I'm not going to use it. Well, something margarine won't even know. Yeah. And they're, look at the ingredients, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> but, you know, it's basically your personal preference. But.